Hello and welcome to another episode of Animal Watch and today we're learning how it's best to rescue baby foxes. Today I'm at the Fox Project in Tunbridge Wells, right at the start of their peak rescue season for baby foxes. This is the time that abandoned baby foxes are handed in, and I've been told that they are caring for over 200 right now, in their on-site clinic and also out with local fosterers, which is a phenomenal amount. Hello, hi Trevor, how are hi. you doing? Very well, thank you. Excellent. Welcome to the Fox Project Cub Unit. <laughs> Cub Unit, I love that. That means baby foxes. I'm afraid it does. And loads of baby <laughs> foxes, I've heard. Uh, yeah, rather a lot at the moment. I think there's, uh, there's 39 I've got, we've got here right now. 39, and, that's uh, a lot. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's go and meet them. I can't wait. Yes. Please on. Oh, thank you. <laughs> As I walked into the clinic, I was confronted by cuteness. A dozen or more tiny faces peering out at me, with huge ears, twitchy noses and watery eyes. Some were bickering with each other, already showing the strength of their personalities and their feisty determination to survive. The question I get asked most yeah. on Animal Watch is basically what people need to do when they actually find baby foxes. I would say monitor it if you can, photo wildlife rescue group as quickly as you possibly can because um, it may be that there's no need to actually bring the animal in or the animals. Um, it may be that they're quite close to an earth, it may be that they're just strayed, it may even be that the vix has been moving them from, from one point to another. With a few clues and perhaps somebody on site looking at the situation, we might be able to reunite them with their parents. Okay, so. say they, they've monitored the situation, <laughs> mum isn't there, or there's an injury and they just know that they have to pick the cub up now. What type of things should they pick the cub up with? Can you demonstrate and well, show us anything if they're, that you have? If they're unprepared, then a t-shirt will do. If you've got a basket, a cat basket or anything at all, yeah. that you can actually contain it in, um, most cubs up to about probably 10 weeks old, um, something like this is perfectly adequate okay. to contain it with. You've got your cub. Okay. You've got your towel or your t-shirt. And the ideal situation is to get Get it contained as much as you can, and preferably under the body, but keep the head out. Okay, yes. Then, because if you put it over his head, he can double back, bite you through the towel. Oof. And, uh, and quite frankly, they've got quite sharp little teeth. They have. They have very sharp little Already. teeth. Already. strawberry. <laughs> He's so cute. Hello. Pop them in with a blanket or something. A bit of paper underneath if you've got the time. <laughs> yeah. And leave them in and okay. secure. Right, so people have got them like this, so straight secure. in the car. Yeah. And um, do they need to call up Fox Project to let you know that they're coming? Yes, we'll always need to know that. If they can't get the cubs, like um, say a cub's fallen down a hole or it's stuck somewhere, then you need to send out... I think that's when an ambulance will be, you know, give us ambulance. a call and we'll send one of our ambulances okay. out. Okay, yeah. so the fox has arrived here with you. Yeah. What's the first thing that you would do? Um, the first thing we would do is get the animal out and assess it on the examination okay. table. Okay, so... How'd you come? Right, this is where you would want to use a towel because you don't know the animal. It doesn't know you. And, and some of them are them more feisty than others. Yeah. Check out all his limbs are working properly. They're okay. Make sure he's got no obvious wounds on him. The tail's okay. No <laughs> damage underneath. <laughs> no damage underneath? Yes. Um, and feel around for parasites, for ticks and stuff like that. That's one thing we'll look. We want to see that the eyes are nice and shiny and not coloured strangely, like yellowed in the corners or very red or anything like that. We would weigh him. And then that would give you an idea of 
what, what, how you need yeah. to feed them, or is it just medicine? It's more about if, if there's any medications. Will you worm them all? Initially we won't. Uh, we let them settle down first because mostly there's not really a worm burden. It's not really a serious worm burden. There's nothing they can't cope with. They all do eventually get wormed. You don't want them to, to become tame. You want them to fear people so you can gradually mm. release them. And then you're going to be, it'll be a gradual, what, people just touching them less and less and less. Yeah, and I mean, they'll, they'll move away from us. I mean, we're, we're going to be doing the, the bottle feeding sort of side of it. And also um, really up to weaning um, and a little beyond weaning, perhaps in some cases. Um, and then as soon as they're able, they'll be going out to fosterers with a semi-outdoor pen, in some cases a puppy pen, which is inside at night and outside by day, um, or else a, 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 a proper outdoor foster pen where they're gradually moved away from people. Before we had even got started, I was told that some new baby foxes were arriving in the ambulance and needed to be assessed immediately. So we rushed out to greet them. The ambulance has just turned up, so what we yep. got here? Well, uh, cubs clearly. If, uh, if it was adults, they'd be going down to our main wildlife hospital. But cubs all come here to the cub unit. Um, I understand there's six in the back of there. Six? Yep. Look at these. So many. Look. So many foxes. So many. Can you see that that side of the face? Yeah. It's gone oh, wow. So it might be actually that there's a bite there. It is, it's like an abscess, isn't it? It's all become infected. Mm, dehydrated, isn't it? So how old do you think this one is, uh, Trevor? Um, about, f about six weeks. About, about five and a half to weeks. six weeks, yeah. When do they leave their mum, generally? Oh, about four and a half months. So, four and a half yeah, months, well, so th yeah. this is very young then. This is painkiller and anti-inflammatory. This is an oral antibiotic, okay. which is okay for tight tiddlers. You can't really properly measure it, it's such a small amount. Right. Um, but uh, it's literally just a dot, and again, it doesn't taste too terrible, so it doesn't taste terrible at all. And that's kind of all we, need to, all we can do for the moment. I think you just have to sort of let it settle a little bit, a bit of quiet warmth. Uh, drop down about a seven or eight foot hole. Really? So I think everything's okay otherwise, but she's just been down there for a little while, so right. need fluid, some oh, bless fluid. Her. Oh my god, there's a lot! There's a yes. lot! The teeth are available. <laughs> All I know at the moment is that um, they came from the demolition site. They're quite bonny, I mean, there's a little yeah. bit of dehydration there, but nothing very much. Good body weight, so I don't know. No, it's no, no smell of mange on there or anything. Yeah, the issues we've got is, is not so much numbers now, it's the numbers at the end of the season going back to the wild because we need rehab sites. We need sites that are rural, safe as they possibly can be, uh, where we can release five cubs, five cubs being the sort of normal size litter, um, back into the wild. The way we do it is control. It's in a pen on site for four to six weeks. They get the sight, sounds and smell of the location okay. and everything that lives there already gets their sight sounds as well too so yeah. when you open the door they've already become part yes. of the environment generally they're released at about four and a half to five months of okay. age and at that age i mean they're, they're quite fearful by then are they so you do oh sort of, yeah you can open the pen and do a lot of them just go run no most of them stay in there until you've cleared off so i mean the chances of you actually <laughs> witnessing a release which is, really? is a great thing to see yeah. i've seen it a few times they'll just sit there and go this is a trick <laughs> you open the door this is a trick each baby was examined from top to bottom for breaks injuries parasites and general health they were weighed and given relevant treatment depending on their needs. One baby had a broken leg, which was very, very loose. Trevor explained that sometimes these breaks heal themselves, but if it's a bad one, they will need to operate. After examining, the cubs were covered up with a cosy blanket so they could de-stress and rest. This meant that we could turn our attention to some of the other resident cubs. Oh, look at them, look at them. Wow, look at them. That's Raven. Okay. And your bottle's there. All right. Is there any particular, I've got to hold the face, right? 
You might have, you might so have, have to, to hold, the, hold the head. You might have to do a little bit of that. Like this. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Feeding the babies was tricky, as Trevor explained to me. Often they take a preference to a human feeder, which meant that my technique may not be accepted by some of those who favoured Trevor. Hold her head so she's not going to waggle it around. Okay. Okay, so this is Felix. He was handed into a cattery, so he got a cat's name. <laughs> really? Mm. Come on, Felix, come on. Funny enough, I managed to get a baby fox to feed from me who Trevor said wasn't keen on his feeding technique. His little feet, it's just like, just like he'd be pushing on his mum's stomach. Come on, baby, come on, you find it. There we are, good boy. Later on, we dropped by the adult unit and met Sandra Reddy, who is in charge of this clinic. Not surprisingly, this adult unit also had baby cubs in, as they were full up to breaking point with young juvenile rescues at the other site. I met some of the older cubs, and it was so beautiful to see how they changed so fast. Just a few weeks had meant that their little ears had grown into long, elegant ears and their once flattish faces were now long and pointed like a classic fox. The colour had changed from brown to a beautiful, vibrant red. They're all boys, actually, in this three. Yeah. Got oh, such a pointy little face, that one. That's Bruno. Yeah. From Hove. Bruno. Bruno, you're beautiful, Bruno. <laughs> You'll probably occasionally find um, a fox in your area that looks really, really mangy and you might want to do something about it. Um, and if it's not seriously ill, if it's just sort of a light mange, people can treat the mm. foxes themselves, can't they, they Sandra? Can do, yes, yeah. With, with this, homeopathic treatment. With yes. homeopathic treatment. So mm. it's not even something that you need to go to your vet for. This is called Serinum and you can get it from a pet shop called Pet Perfection. You'll find them online. You have to put it into sweet food, so jam sandwiches or honey sandwiches it's best not to touch them but yeah. just to put them into a lid like yeah. that mange usually starts with the tail and it will strip the tail bare and then work forward on the body if the mange has only just started on the tail then that's really not bad mange at all if it's more than 50 percent coat loss we prefer to have them in and treat them well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Animal Watch on the beautiful orphaned foxes that are being looked after by the Fox Project. And if you'd like to find out more about how you can support Fox Project, I'll pop their details below. You can click on their website. And um, as they said, if you find an orphaned fox, make sure you call your local wildlife rescue as soon as possible if you're not in the vicinity of the Fox Project. And make sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel by clicking the box in the corner below and be sure to tune in every week while I will be bringing you some fantastic episodes on animal rescue, wildlife, wolves and dogs and conservation. Bye for now. If you would like to find out how you too can help the Fox Project or maybe you have found a fox in distress in the Kent, Sussex, Surrey and Lower London areas or perhaps you need to administer mange treatment then be sure to drop by their website foxproject.org.uk Foxes should never be harmed and fox hunting is now illegal. If you ever see any abuse towards wild foxes or their dens, then please be sure to report it immediately to League Against Cruel Sports at www.league.org.uk.